see what that does. <laughs> I just cheated. I just threw a piece of tag board in the corner. That'll work. Let's see what happens. I need to cut any strips and just run it around the edges. That might work. I'll be back in a couple minutes. Go do what you need to do. You working on splicer settings? Um, I'm just uh, setting up a dual tower print. Okay.
What's that? Oh, it's um. I I put that piece of paper in there, and it shift. It made a much bigger spike and it shifted it. But it also made that corner just as low. I'm going to construct a little box that will hopefully catch all these purges because I'm getting tired of trying to clean them all up. Oh, it makes a mess. Uh, it does indeed. Buddy, what do you need?
Okay, no idea how well or not that'll work, but at least it's something. Yeah, I don't know why, but the uh, Z rod started squeaking a lot. Despite my best efforts to lubricate them again, they're still squeaking. So, I don't have um, uh, the Dalrin. Um, pieces because they didn't have them at the time and then they sent me the wrong ones for free because I had emailed them and then I ordered and then they sent me like some free ones but they sent me the wrong ones but they're free so I didn't complain so does that mean you have brass in there I do so got a dot of grease on it I did, and uh, it's not enough, I guess, because yeah. they're still squeaking no matter what I do. They were silent for a while. I Like, I had lubricated them, and they were fine, and then they started squeaking again, and I re -lubri reapplied lubrication, and, and uh, nothing I do seems to make the squeak go away anymore, so. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't know if you heard it, but I ordered the the Delrin ones. So. Yeah, if you have trouble getting them, I uh, ended up with an extra set because I went um, B1 to B2 and bought longer rods and I bought the Delrin things with them. Gotcha. So if for some reason that turns into a long drawn out thing, I can send you a set of three. Oh, yeah, I wish I'd have known that back when I was having trouble. <laughs> But um no, I appreciate that though. Uh yeah. I um don't think it should be a problem though. I already placed the order and it looks like they're shipping it, so Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm having a no name cake. Again? No name cake. <laughs> Are you addicted now? I am. They are good, but like I said, once you've had a couple, if you keep eating them in quick succession, you won't have to worry about being obsessed because they'll get old. Yeah. So how are you this evening? You speaking to Daniel? Yes. Yes. How are I'm you? doing well. Doing well. Uh, since I didn't have any Z homing, I just was doing G92s on Z, so I started messing around with repeatability for the camera-based liner for um, TAMB, and I decided to just wire that into TAMB itself. So I haven't pushed this to GitHub yet because uh, I'm still doing some final testing. I may push it. But, um, let's see, where's the chat? Okay. I can stream chat. Yeah, you can do that. I mean, you can start a stream if you wanted to show something. Oh, no, this, this, this is pretty much text. So I was just going to post it up. Well, that doesn't look pretty at all on the Discord because <laughs> it's just not wide enough. That sucks. Well, I guess if I widen my browser window. I was going to say, mine looks okay. Okay. Yeah, my brother so, wouldn't have been enough either, so. Yeah, well, it obviously wraps and sucks if it's too narrow. But if um, it, the TAMB just has a flag called dash repeat, and if you say two or three or five or whatever, it'll run that many cycles through all the tools, which doesn't take all that long if the lighting is good on the recognizer. Okay. And uh, it fits out the statistics. And you called it a recognizer? 
Really? Uh, the circle. Yeah, circle recognizer thing. Sorry, that's wrong. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, but one thing that's not in the sample you see, and this is one of the things why I haven't pushed it yet, is it should have a column that says pixels per millimeter for each tool that's the average, which is going to depend on what camera you have and your focal length and distance and a whole bunch of other things. So it just calculates it. And then the note, note at the bottom that repeatability cannot possibly be better than one pixel. Okay, that makes sense. Because when it calculates repeatability, it's a combination of, and I don't know of any way to separate it out. How accurate is the camera? How accurate is the algorithm that centers it on the camera? Plus the actual physical repeatability. Yeah, what's the step distance, right? Um, if your step distance is like doing an M48. Yeah. There's a whole a lot of things that go into that, but uh, it, it is true that I believe you could detect a tool that's not locking properly by looking at the, the max, min, and standard deviation. If, if one tool was significantly different than the others, that that would give you a clue. So you have three tools? Or? I have three. I just put up a, a, a Camaro. Okay. And uh, uh, Char Hobbit, I think I'm using your STLs for that. Okay, I know that there are some adjustments that need to be made. Yeah. It works pretty well. Um, the one thing I found out that we discussed a lot is uh, the Hermo is a little deeper than a, than a BM36, so you need yeah. to add your parking stalls for the fixes. And in fact, it took me sort of an embarrassingly long time to realize that one of the loud counts I was hearing was the crossbow hitting the Camaro. Oh my! Okay. <laughs> yeah, you just have to you just have to make sure that your why all your all your um, tool plate, I guess yeah. the, the tool connection plates are in the same. Room. Yeah, and more or less. More or less, yeah. And you shimmer space. All right, what the hell have I got going on there? My little um, purge box is collecting the purges quite nicely. What printer are we looking at on the feed? Mine. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Thanks. I am yeah, trying to get my CDR10 working again so I can get it back to pretty much. I'll get back to work on the Camaro. I'll get back to work yeah. on the uh, face shield, I mean. Yeah. Um, but I just dropped 50 off today. Um, I don't know what I've done. I was trying to shim my bed a little bit. That was that picture that I posted. Is the, is the picture I on um, and I tried to shim shim the bed a little bit, and I've got some weirdness. Um, and I don't know if I've done something wrong. I don't know if this is completely accurate or not. Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you, I, uh, I believe these printers can tell when they're printing COVID stuff because I've had printers that have been ultra-reliable for years do the weirdest shit while trying to print. Yeah. I have a big Delta that's a scratch belt that has been one of my rock solid go to printers. If I have to print anything and it has twice now spit its Bowden tube out the top of the extruder, which it has never ever done. And just the no, weirdest things. Do you think it's something to do with the the the, the max optimization for doing the speed? Hey, I was I was trying to push the speed on it a lot. I mean, it's a pretty fast printer to begin with, but I was cranking it. And, uh, I actually see. started. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. 
actually started running into problems with the PETG. Uh, the PETG that I started printing all this stuff with, I could easily maintain, you know, 100 millimeters a second print speed. No problem. Yeah. And then I switched uh, filament, and I'm now, like, that one particular filament, if I print faster than, like, 65 millimeters, even cranking the heat up, it just it yeah. prints like crap. This won't do it. Huh, yeah. Yeah. It, my, my theory is it's the same way the dogs can smell beer. I never can tell. <laughs> <laughs> One more match, and then just say, let the system do what it's supposed to do. The problem is, is this thing is so big, I don't have a space that I can knock it away from the rest of the uh -huh. And you put a 15-pound cat walking across the bed. Yeah. Oh, and this dumbass cat, sorry, you, you, Doofus. He walked across the bed while it was running. The bed yeah. was a kitchen. He just kind of like trotted across it. It's like you're a dumbass. You just burned the shit out of your paws. So, and and I got a and I got a layer shift. So yeah, my friend, of course. my friend Jeff that I've been doing a lot of this uh, COVID printing with, he is. You know, he's the kind of guy that, like, he decides he's going to do this, so uh, he already had two printers, so that has led to the purchasing of the third, fourth, and fifth printer now um, in the last, like, three weeks. Oh, of course. And I got, um, I've got two more. Well, and it's dangerous that we both, you know, I live, like, two and a half, three minutes at most from Micro Center. He lives, you know, oh, 15 yeah. minutes from Micro Center. So, yeah. and IC3D is in town here, too. So, while the rest of the world is having... Oh, wow. Well, so... What? What is this Micro Center that you speak of? Oh. Giant computer store in my backyard, basically. And I, I, I've heard of Micro Center. So, I have about... 30 minutes from where and they are, they are a fantastic thing that, that seems to occupy a niche that has survived many other retail folding up and this and that. They're, yeah. I probably bought, I've built my PCs forever, but I finally decided that PowerSpec could actually build them cheaper than I could. And I bought yeah. my last couple of PCs there. They have huge aisle full of uh, filament. Is your local one have yeah. a ton of filament? So our local one is the main test store. So we get all the stuff that doesn't even manage to get out. So uh, for instance, I know their purchasing guy who does all their Chinese purchasing. And so I know what printers they're getting next, usually a month or two ahead of anything public. Um, for instance, I can tell you where their filament comes from, um, and it depends on which filament you buy. Um, it is either Polymaker or Esun, for the most part. Yeah. So um, they they've had it private label manufactured, and I've been trying to get them for years off to Keene Valley uh, or Keene Village to start making have them making filament here. And then they're also, IC3D is here in Columbus, where I'm at. So I'm like, why aren't you talking to IC3D? Why aren't you talking to KDP? Yeah. Like, um, and what's weird is, is they have absolute piles of PLA and PLA plus right now. But PETG, they kind of overbought it last year. And so for a while, there was just a glut of it. And they started having to like, drop the prices on it just to move it. Well, they're sold out. There is not a real PTG in the store right now. Yeah. And normally I would go in there and there'll be two or three aisles of PTG. So I'm kind of in shock because I'm like, oh, I guess I've got to buy it elsewhere. 
Um, and compared to what, you know, I see 3D is good stuff, but it's expensive. You know, 30 yeah. something dollars a roll. Um, when I'm used to buying it for like 18 to 22. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, I still, I'm, I'm gonna, I've got some stuff that I gotta print now, but, um, Innofil, I found a cheap source for Innofil. I can't tell if it's back stock stuff, but, um, it's like 3D print NA, uh, which is out of, I think, Canada. Um, I was looking at their uh, their stuff a while back. They started carrying, well, they've carried Innofil for a long time, and it's all 50% off. And Innofil is pretty so good you, stuff. So are you printing your credit stuff in, in PETG instead of PLA, and is there a reason? Yeah, so our, um, so the local VA hospital here, um, and the nas- and the national VA has specified PEPG, and they oh, okay. specified a specific mask design that they accept. Okay. And, and um, it's pretty good. Um, their their reasoning was is they don't want to have to worry about UV degradation, and you know they need to be able to basically soak it in a disinfectant. I mean, I'm, I'm not questioning their reasoning. I, I, so. In my particular case, the hospital that I asked what they needed and showed them some stuff, they, they wanted those straps across the back of the head that help keep the elastic for their yep. regular masks off their ears. And yep. so I've given them, them, yeah, I think I've given them 160 at this point, and they sent me a message today and said, we want more of those. Yeah. So, and they're just out of POA, and I, I just stuck a thing in there with them that said it can, you can disinfect, not sterilize, but disinfect right. with, uh, with alcohol or uh, peroxide to not autoclave. <laughs> well, and then, and then okay. here, what, what's kind of crazy, um, oh, uh, um, four minutes. Their actual, their one of their North American locations is in up in uh, Dayton, Ohio, mm-hmm. and they've worked with the state because one of the things that is impossible for them to get a hold of is the swabs that they use for the test. They have to, you know, it's a big long deep swab that has to go up your nose, and when they pull it off, they put it in the tube and then they snap it off. They actually had to design a swab that would be safe to go up the nose and then still capable of being snapped off in the, the test tubes. And yeah, well, and that's, that's actually the, the part that is in uh, Ohio is Form Labs Material Lab. And Form Labs, um, along with one of their large dental lab. Uh, providers that they've been working with in our state. The dental lab announced that they are purchasing 30 new Form 3s and it's the like the dental version of the Form 3 oh, and yeah. they, will, they will be using them to manufacture uh, what between them and what Form Labs has here in the state, something like 500,000 test swaps. Nice. And it's, it's all, uh, you know, FDA approved. It's like well, they've I mean, been the testing it. Already in yeah, they've yeah. been working on it with Cleveland Clinic, um, so it's it's fairly well tested. The part that's hard here is is we were expecting to get hit a lot harder than we have been, and they prepared a lot faster than a lot of the other states have managed to. So, for instance, we have a thousand bed. Um, set of emergency hospitals that were set up around the state that are currently not being used. So they're actually going to like start stepping some of that stuff back. Well, that's what success looks like. I mean, this has become so polarized and so politicized and so much BS around it. Right, right. 
Well, but I, I don't know that, I mean, some of it was overreaction, but that's also what successful isolation looks like. And that's right. one, of the, one of the problems in, in the, all the BS going on with this is that success looks like you didn't do anything. Right, right. <laughs> you know, I, I, um, I have a couple coworkers that I, you know, uh, and, and people that I work with who are in New York. Yeah. And like one of the guys that I, I work with in New York, he's like, yeah, he's like the neighbor down the hall, you know, passed away a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got two or three tenants in my building that their parents have passed away. You know, he's like, you know, I have a coworker who's been in a coma for, you know, about two weeks now, you know, uh, tell him that's overreacting, right? Yeah. Now I work so. with a lot of people in New York, and I talk to them on a daily basis, and and yeah, it's 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 wild. But it, but in all kinds of different areas. I mean, it, 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 uh, it and, and I know some people that are real doubters and think this is all a conspiracy theory, and you know, I it, it's just so squirrely. Oh, I, I, I was telling, um, you know, these guys the other night, somebody on uh, that I'm friends with on Facebook um, has a friend, and that person posted something on one of my friend's comments, and it was this long, you know, diatribe that was mostly full of BS, honestly. Yeah. And yeah. so... There was so much BS in it, though, that I could basically, I basically just picked one thing and was like, you're an idiot, right? <laughs> you know, I just like, like spelled it out. I was, I was, you know, my, my, my patience for it is, is over, you know, you're an idiot and here's why. And they basically came back and they're like, well, you know, you know, you name calling and stuff is, is bad. Uh, and and you didn't address my other issues. Yeah. And so I'm well, like, okay. So, and this is, this is one of those things where, um, you know, I, I have a tendency for thoroughness in things. And so I sat down and I went line by line through their entire thing and cited facts and actually provided citations. Oh, well, just oh, that's all just government conspiracy stuff. I mean, sure. you say those are you say those are facts. I say that that means that you're under their mind control. Yeah. It, the 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 best thing though was one cost a one cost fallacy. Yeah. No, but seriously, what? that's what it really comes into. It. It's like they've, they've both invested so much emotional energy into it, they can't afford to not defend not to defend it. Well, um, and so one of the funny things I did, though, is one of the sources that I cited was, of uh, course, Fox News. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Nice. So, uh, you know, and, and I was like, well, but that can't be called fake news. Like, you, you trust them. <laughs> you know, it's like. And uh, it was what was so what was funny was, as I posted it, it, I spent probably like three hours one day on it just because I felt like it. You know, yeah, got a little bit of a fire underneath me, you know. And, oh, sometimes uh, it's sort of fun to somebody to be in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I posted it, and her her response back to me was basically like TLDR. I still think the way that I want to think. And my my immediate response back was, "Well, that's part of the problem in the first place." Um, yeah. And then uh, because I put so much time in it, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just share this on my feed. I'm going to take her name out of it. And I'm just going to share it on my feed in, in Facebook. And a bunch of my friends were like, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's just very interesting. It's a, to me, an ever fascinating social phenomenon. But I told somebody on the text discord the other day, the thing that just cracks me up. I mean, just, I look at it and I can't help but giggle to people who are holding up a big sign that says, open up now, it's all bullshit, it's all a conspiracy, it's all blah, 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 and they're wearing a mask while they're holding the sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Every disaster movie starts with a with the government ignoring a scientist. That's correct. <laughs> One of my friends posted a picture of uh, the the mayor from Jaws standing on the beach, right. and and he and, and they're like he opened it up too. Uh, yeah, we're gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> Oh, man. man, I am having no luck with finding a uh, power connector. Yeah? Yeah, I want to replace the one that was in the original bomb with something a little bit more reliable. Now she's had problems with his. But I don't want to go messing with the new one that's been specced. A, I don't really, I'm not really worrying about the two fuses situation. Yeah, that's certainly pretty weird. Yeah, I, I literally, I looked at it, and I'm like, you're literally, you know, first of all, the only country in the world where uh, 220 slash 250 volts is, you know, hot on both connections is the U.S. Yeah. You know, we're the only place in the world that does two-phase 220, 250. Yep. Right? So uh, you're literally planning for someone to miswire a printer here and then take it to Europe. Yeah. And then or right, plug I'm it in sure. yeah. there. Or bring a printer from Europe that's been miswired and plug right. it in here. Yeah. You know, and even then, even if they did do that, as long as you flipped the switch from 110 to 220, or 220 to 110, it would work. However, what you would end up with is... Um, you'd have to have also a wiring mistake that was a shock hazard yeah. before it would be a problem. That That is, you know. Well, part of that, and I don't know for sure because I haven't uh, asked Josh, but part of that may be we had some discussion about thermal cutoffs on 110 volt beds. And at right. one point I said something about, you know, these things only cost about a buck. I'd, I'd like to see one in both legs of the thing. And it, it turned into a little bit of a, it turned into one of the more acrimonious debates that's been on that Discord. And so I just quit. Yeah, just I said, saw it. I just, I just said, hey, man, you're talking one dollar part. Do whatever you want. Yeah. And, I mean, I, um, I, I'm with you on that. And, and and that's the thing. It's hard to yeah. argue against dollar well, parts. <laughs> well, yeah, because I, I think I actually kind of helped kick that off too. Because I like I asked Josh, you know, can you put one on both both leads? Just because yeah. I'm, you know, crazy that way, and I want to have one on both leads. I don't care if it's overly cautious or not. It's just what I want, you know. And then it just blew up. Yeah. Yeah. There's. <laughs> There's and no I, reason. And I was, I was with you, one of the things I never got out of my mouth into the text was, <laughs> you know, it's possible even in 110 volts in the U.S., it's very possible that the hot wire gets reversed. Yeah, yeah I just fixed forward, one of my... You know, yeah, I find those all the time. And so, it can happen in the wall. Yeah. I literally so, just fixed know, one of mine. Part of the heater shorts to the frame and is overheating. I would like the little thing to melt and click, whether it's a one-time or a repeater. I don't care. You know, I, it just, I don't know, I'm just repeating now what I said. On the, <laughs> and I'm preaching to the choir, so I'll, I'll quit. <sighs> so, so, yeah. Um, um, I'm trying to find a plug that will fit the original form factor and replace it. And well, um, that's what I was going to say. I actually didn't use the one in the bomb because I have a pile of things laying around and let me see if I can find it in the next couple of minutes. And I may not get the numbers right here, but it seems like all, almost all of those things that you find are set up for, what, 5 amps or 10 amps or something? 10 amps. And, and you, and, and you, you can find a, uh, yeah, you can find a bazillion of them that are cheap and probably all made in the same factory that are set up for 10 amps that have a cartridge fuse and a switch and a little yeah. IE, whatever that is, connector and three yeah. lugs. Well, you can find those. What, How many is yeah, a bazillion? Is, 
what what Josh <laughs> specified though actually has an EMI RFI filter on it though. Okay. And that's the part that well, I have a hard time finding. Is one that well, I found that factor. Some, I found some years ago a thing like those generic ones for the females. And I bought yep. a pile of them, and they are physically different. I just put one of those in there because I have them. But let me see if I can track down because I probably bought them four years ago. Let's and see I if also I can track down what they are. I'd also like them to be have an illuminated switch, but they tend yes. to not want to put those in the EMI RFI ones because yes. you know neon switches cause EMI RFI problems. Yeah, Matt, right neon lamps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We throw a little LED in. Yeah. Except that would require changing a design that a Brazilian of a man made. That's true. Did you ever see that skit? <laughs> see which? Oh, there was a comedian who uh, was talking about his blonde girlfriend, and uh, oh. it's like. There was a tsunami and one Brazilian died and his girlfriend turns to him and goes, Oh my god, how many is a Brazilian? Yeah. yeah I seem to remember that. Uh, um, let's see. Uh I'm really she can call him. Does anybody use DaVinci Resolve? Uh, I wouldn't do DaVinci. Huh? Your, your voice cut, has anybody used a what? DaVinci Resolve. Oh, no. I created a video, first one I've ever created, and I'd like to turn it into like a template so that all I have to do is go in and edit the specific areas I want to edit. But Never mind. I'll have to figure that out on my own. <laughs> I created a time lapse earlier today of, of a dual print, and I was just going to throw it up as a video. Oh, okay. I hate when I'm looking at a data sheet for something. I'm looking at data sheets yeah. for the outlets, and they don't include just the data sheet for that one particular type of outlet. Oh, yeah. It's for like every outlet that this company manufactures in one like 30 page long document. Uh, 15 is the part number to figure out which is. Oh, 
15 amp non-illuminated ones, just a simple no EMI, RFI, are all over uh, Amazon. Now. Yeah. So I have trouble getting them. I'm sorry, uh, fifth, full 15, not 10. Okay. I had trouble getting them years ago. They're all over now. Yeah, so I'm going to quit with that. There's lots of choices that will fit the outlet in the back plate or side plate. Also, I can put mine on the side. I put mine in the back and just cut an equivalent hole in the back plate. Yeah, see, I already have nicely lasered stuff, and I don't want to with it. So yeah. I'm trying to stick to original dimensions. Understood. Although I think these would, I think the hole that those fit is fairly universal. It, according to what I, I'm seeing here, it should be 59 centimeters by 49.3. Yeah. So I'm, like I'm going to check that. So one of the strange things I'm seeking is an LED ring for the camera that would run off a of five volt so that you could just tap it into the USB. It's not smart LEDs. It's not NeoPixels or WS2812, et cetera. It's just a five volt ring. And I haven't found one yet. Those are a little tricky. Yeah. Anybody will tell you that the smart, the you know, pixels or hot stars or whatever. Yeah. I mean, the, the plugs right into the uh, duet. Yeah, and you know, in all honesty, I've got, I've got a ton of uh, WS2812 stuff laying around here. I've got everything from loose surface mount ones to strips to everything. I have all products that some people a couple of years back and made about uh, 150 of them and sold them to them. Were you planning on using? Were you planning on using the dot star for something else? Oh uh, no, I've got these are neo these are neo pixels, which are really WS twenty eight twelve Bs, and that's why I've got tons of stuff laying around. So I was thinking about just hacking together a little bit of stuff out of it because they've just added neo pixel support to the DF three. Right. That's so. That's what I did. Uh, rem did you see the video I posted at all? I don't think so. I posted it uh, <laughs> literally right after you posted your video. I'd already shot it, but I hadn't. Okay. But you beat me because I was editing mine. No, I almost never do videos, and I, I just, I don't know why I got a wild hair and did that one. <laughs> but um, Okay, I, I, see the, I see the link for it. Yeah, uh, so I use, if you just watch the first little bit, you can see uh, where I talk about the NeoPixel ring. And I love um, your animation. <laughs> thank you. Some of the information is a little dated. I tried to update it in the description, but there's no way to annotate after the video is made. It's just really stupid. Yeah, they removed it. Delete it and repost it to re-annotate it. Yeah, they used to have a annotation feature that you could use, but they removed it for some reason. Yeah, it's... it didn't work on cell phones, so I guess the answer is, well, if it doesn't work on cell phones, let's just get rid of it. Well, that everything they do is about money, so some somehow it was either given money to the wrong people or not given it to the right people or something. No. Well, when they removed uh, the anno annotations, they broke a lot of people's, they had like whole things that required the annotations and yeah. without it, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, people made like, I don't know, I never actually used one, but I guess there used to be... Um, videos that were interactive and they could use the annotation feature to make them interactive. Um, 
Yeah, it would like take you from one video to another or something and I don't know. I never did it. I was just reading about it, but uh Yeah. But it'd be How nice to do... Go ahead. How did you do that animation up front with what Oh, honestly, I paid somebody to do it. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. It's really, I think it's it's really good, outstanding. Yeah, I was really, really happy um, with what she had done. Um, yeah. Uh, have you ever heard of Fiverr? I uh, know. So Fiverr is a, basically people can put up their... Um, uh, Skills like animation oh, or music uh, or a freelance clearing house. Yeah, and guns for hire. Job bids. Yeah. Okay. And then um, people will like say, okay, well, for five dollars I'll do this, for twenty dollars I'll do that, for fifty dollars I'll do that type of thing. So um, yeah, I actually think I underpaid her for what she delivered. That's um, pretty cool. I gave her a decent tip, so. <clears throat> There's an ending animation that goes along with it if you make it to the end. <laughs> I uh, put in some ending credits along with it uh, where I credited uh, basically everybody here. That's <laughs> still playing. How do you pronounce your last last name, by the way? Estes. All right. That's what I thought. Estes I just... Park in Colorado, which I have nothing to do with. <laughs> what about the model rockets? Uh, you <laughs> I'm know, kidding. I was a kid, but other than that, um, I was just I'd love to have something to do. Oh, I'm, I'd love to have something to do with them, but no, not that either. Keep forgetting that whatever for whatever reason I'm not I forget the value so every time I restart it I gotta restart you know, we, it. Oh yeah. And you I know we were sit in front of it while I was doing while I was doing it. Anyway, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh no 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 no. I was just uh, no, no tri you know, trivia. Just the name Estes, and it's not associated with any of those things. It, it has faded from West Texas memory, and it was never a national thing. It's nothing anybody would ever have heard of. When I was growing up, the name Estes was somewhat infamous in West Texas because of an uncle of mine, Billy Saul Estes made a habit of selling fertilizer tanks to farmers he did not have. And he collected money from the farmers and moved on down the road for a long time before they put him in jail. So there was a, a con man called Billy Saul Estes that was infamous when I was growing up. But fortunately, that's all he did. But he really was an uncle. Looking pretty good, man. I uh, went back to the live feed and looking at the square tubes that it's been building up. Of course, you can't completely tell on these cameras. But. Yeah, I'll take a picture. Um, there's definitely some print defects, uh, defects in the red a little bit in one area. Yeah. Um, I'll be able to tell better once... Uh, But I, I think I might be having some repeat, repeatability in the locking mechanism on the red one for some reason. Yeah. You doing anything special with your uh, wipers and purging at the moment? Um, I just purge uh, a few millimeters out, and 
That's about it. There's a looks like the red one needs to get adjusted because there's a few uh, strings. It's kind of hidden from the camera, but there's a few purges that. Yeah. I see him in the overhead camera. Um, I just noticed that you're passing over the wipers, of course, going in and out. That you're not doing any specific wipe when you put, uh, like repetitive wipe when you put out. No, I was, but I disabled it. The black one purge is great, but the red one, though, on the, I don't know, maybe I need to move it up a little bit or something, but for some reason it is not catching all the um, red purges. There's probably about four of them stuck to the outside of the print. Oh, yeah. yeah I have noticed those silicon wipers are fairly sensitive in height. Um, getting them just right, I guess, you know, you just kind of want them to wipe across the conical part of the nozzle. Did you see the, uh, the H2B put it out there and then I put the thing over there. Yeah. Did you watch the, take a look at the little video there. Okay. Oh, the brush thing? Yeah. Okay. I want to cut it. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's nice. So it retracts itself out of the way sideways. Yep. Just and by it, moving up and down. But what it's doing is that it's just rotating it. Yeah. Where it, it's a just it's not even just rotating. What it's doing is it's got a rack and pinion. Um, it's running it up and down a uh, track. Yep. And as it's and it's yeah it's running it, running up the track and it's got a little bit of Z. Uh, so you can actually continue to drive it and with the yeah. base base nozzle. So raise the base past the uh, past the vertical point or past the right. uh, once it gets it fully extended it can raise it. That, 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 I see the like M shaped thing and so as it drives the rack it, it drives it into or out of being over the pressure. That's nice. Well I'm putting one right now. Um yeah. mostly so I can actually I mean I'm playing with it in CAD but Modeling for whatever reason, it came in as bodies and it's not oh. because the bow it was posted in SolidWorks 2020, which you know if I uh, in May <laughs> I can get SolidWorks 2020. Yeah. So they've got the 1920 academic year version. Yeah. Right from EAA. Uh -huh. But it and until what May June time frame I guess. The 2021 version comes out. Yeah. Uh, for the okay. academic, which means I have to completely uninstall and reinstall. Yeah. Um, yeah but that's not big. That's not really. A big. I think it's a pretty cool little brush thing. It's interesting. Well, I was thinking you might have a camera. Yeah, I, I I saw that, and that's not a bad idea. Um, the only thing you would give up with that is the camera would not be quite as Z adjustable. As if it was on the bed. Oh, right. That was why that right. wasn't as good as an idea. Well, it maybe, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not as the adjustable, but I think yeah. it could. I mean, you could probably modify it a little bit so that you've got a base Z and then you've got, you know, you can continue to drive it out. Because you're, yeah. you're not talking multiple, you know, what's the distance of and you're talking, I mean, you're probably only going to have to lift it and lower it, uh, oh, I don't know, you know, centimeters, accommodate lots of different things. I, I will say we're kind of making an assumption about tools because Josh pointed out the other day that he's got some kind of ultrasonic heater tool for a biology thing that is 
have to lower the bed by 200 to even pick it up and get it over the bed. Yeah, so that's a, that's, that may not be possible. Yeah. So I, I, I've become convinced that the uh, camera needs to be attached to the bed somehow, either along an edge or on a drain or that. But I'll tell you, after putting together the Hamera and this and that, and I, you may or may not have seen my post earlier today, yeah. camera along any given edge of the bed just doesn't work. Yeah. Really. yeah. So as much as I'd like for it to be automatic, we don't do alignment that often. Having a bracket of some sort that it clips on and puts it in a relatively, it doesn't have to be intact by any means. If it puts it in roughly the same position in a couple of millimeters, that gives you the opportunity to have a command. PAMD will take a command line flag that tells it where it is. And if you give it that, it skips that first dialog where you have to jog the first thing over the. And so you could have yourself a little mount camera that clips on the bed. Then you go up and just hit a command and drink a cup of coffee while it does it. You don't have to do anything else. That would be kind of nice. Yeah. It's really you know, funny. What's that? It's really funny. I'm sitting here the whole time trying to like find the specs on this thing so that I can find a replacement for it. And then you know what I realize? Hmm. I'm trying to look at like data sheets and stuff to get the measurements and the data sheets don't have any measurements. I have the thing here on my desk. Yeah, and there it is. My micrometers are right over there, so uh that is physical reality. What a resource. <laughs> I do that too. Uh, walk around if I work right now. Yeah, on top of your head? Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, no. My, if, if my glasses were on top of my head, I would know immediately if it's not working. I've done that, so I've mm -hmm. looked for them. I am so blind without them. So, yeah, I'm trying to... Like, I've not been very productive the last two days. Because I've gotten so most of it is because I'll get off of work at 37 o'clock, and then I get on another, or somebody else, and then it's nine, you know. And my Canovo bed will be my Canovo heater will be here on Monday. Um, uh, I'm like, I'm off all of next week. I just I, I just basically said. And Thursday, it's like, hey, Bob, can I take vacation next week? And he's like, yeah, yeah I mean, you're, you missed your vacation at the beginning of April. Because I canceled my vacation because I couldn't go. And, um, because, you know, Murph was canceled. Yeah. Um, <laughs> excuse me. I have a glass of milk with my, uh, with my uh, Yeah, it's uh, so I just looked up the dot star neopixel stuff. That looks dead simple. Yeah, it plugs right in and like two lines of G code and you're done. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, that is fine. Um, here, I'll drop the G-code in there. I uh, used... Oh, I found, I found that. Oh, you saw where I put it in there? No, I mean, I, that's what I was just looking up. I, I looked up the wiring in the G-code, and it's dead. It's just easy. Yep. Uh, I couldn't find the wiring, but um, I figured it, it out. Only, yeah, it only says it on... Uh, uh, being started, God, not on the wiring diagram. Yeah, but uh, I um, 
I figured it out, no problem. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I uh, okay. obviously did it all already, so. Yeah, it's uh, actually it's on the uh, hardware overview page. Yeah. I searched I all. I would. Yeah, I searched all over for it. Um, I don't know. They could have updated something, but. Well, did you search for the word dot star? I mean, oh well, dot star. Yeah, but NeoPixel, I uh, didn't. That's what I was getting at there. Yeah. No, I mean he added the NeoPixel support, and that's fine, and all of that. Uh, and you just do the X0 or X1. Uh, the document, because he did the dot stars first, that's the key to finding the documentation if you were having trouble finding it. Right, but a dot star and a NeoPixel are not 100% the same thing, but they're close enough. No, not at all. I'm, I'm just saying he, he put all the documentation on all the on all the uh, Tozuki pages under the word dot star, and you read that, and then you go set your M150 to X1 instead of X0, and it does NeoPixels. Because he added that later. It's just, it makes it hard to, if you search on the word NeoPixel, it's only in one place, and it does you keep, if you search on the word dot star, it shows you like the wiring and stuff. Even That's... though on that same page, it says how to do the NeoPixels. It just doesn't find it. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, Either way, I guessed correctly, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, not rocket now, I, So now, I said I had a bunch of this stuff laying around. Do I, let me put on my wireless headset. Okay. Okay, did we transfer it? Yes. Wait, wait, wait. 
The heck? Oh, sorry, I, uh, my 3D mouse slipped out of my hand. But man, this thing is almost brand new, and I was swear I just charged it last night, and it ran out of batteries while I was working it with it. Like, I've only owned it for, I don't know. Did you buy it new? Uh, yeah, brand new. Weird. What is it going? Oh, dang it. That's interesting. I somehow just lost the history for these things. Well, 
the last the history in uh, Fusion. Yeah, I've never done that before. Like the history for these objects are just simply gone. Yeah. Accidentally created the bodies from. from incorrectly. Things kind of wacky looking, but oh well. Are you saying it's a chip off the old block?
Yeah, I'm just playing. make? I don't know. I was just thinking raising it up a little. Well, that's going to be a little more better. but you're gonna you're gonna not connect the hammer on one of the buttons. Um, particularly accurate on that, but at least what I did is I just, I, I loaded up the hair with everything, and then I put it in the radius until it nearly bal as balanced as much as I could, and I put it in the radius and then got out where it goes. Well, so, it clears, it just doesn't clear by a lot, that's all. I mean, if you, one of the things you could do, does your... Uh, when the bed is all the way up, is it all the way to the top or is there a space? I don't, I haven't gotten that far yet. So. Figure if I get my electronics wired up this weekend, by the time my bed stuff arrives, I'm going to be able to put the bed together and get it on there. I'm just going back and forth between the two, and I was going to look and see what the towers look like on the uh, after a whole bunch of tool changes uh, to, to try to get an idea of how consistent or not the uh, locking was. And just to have something in, going on in the stream while I um, don't feel like messing with the printer. I 
I don't know if I like this hole. Any opinion? Um, sorry, I'm over at the... Oh, no worries. Ago, is I just soldered up four neo a uh, little strip of four neo in the connector and plugged them into the connector on the six HC. So now I can on the console. I just was the tab that had the command in it. Came on immediately. One fifty. Green is U for some reason. It's not our UB, it's our UB. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm saying the command letters in the G code are not R and G and B. They are R and U and B for whatever bizarre reason of Dave's little mind. The green component is the letter U uniform. They are working perfectly. I could potentially add a little flag to TAMB to have it set this for people. Say again? I'm sorry, so you can change colors to blue? Well, uh, no, so this is to eliminate the camera, is what I'm using. I would, um, after weeks and months of having great success with different room lighting and the recognizer and etc. Um, I can only get it to work in the daytime now. And I don't know what I changed or what changed or whatever, but it was working in daylight, evening light, uh, nighttime with the ceiling lights on, and 
I can't get it to work for anything now, so I thought I'd start messing around with lighting. All right. Um, I like it enough.
definitely something going on with this tower. Now the black is kind of seems to have shifted over, but the red didn't, so it didn't skip steps. Huh. I just noticed something. The Z hasn't been squeaking. I guess it finally must have worked. It's the lubrication must have finally worked itself in or something. have my uh, phone down here so I can't take a picture at the moment. Um.
Hello. Hey, Josh. How's it going? Oh, my gosh. Josh. Josh. I'm sorry. What did you say, Josh? Hold up. I'm confused because I have a uh, double echo from the live stream. Okay. Oof, that was... Oh, no, it's back. Hang on. Let's... Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, how is your dual print going? Um, it's okay. There's some quirkiness here. I'm just doing two vertical towers because I wanted to see if I was going to see any kind of strangeness from maybe locking, not repeating or something. And okay. I def definitely see some artifacts on the surface. Um, well, what you're doing right now looks like a good test to run. Um, if you wanted to pick up like whether or not you're getting inconsistent locking issues. Yep. Uh, are you doing a prime tower before that or no? I'm just purging. Okay, just curious. A prime tower will help because that way you can root cause whether or not it's the restarting of the filament or it's the actual locking that's being consistent. But if you finish, like, if you're actually per like using that properly by the end of your perimeter of your square, you'll probably be able to make that uh, judgment call. Uh, I'm mostly, yeah, I'm mostly looking for shifts and and layer between layers. Oh, something cut out. Mostly looking what? Uh, looking at shifts between layers. Okay, yeah, that's that's a good way to do it. As long as you're you're sure that you're looking at the shift and uh, not like the restart of the filament. Thick is the build plate. Do you know off the Never mind. I'll just measure. Looks a little wacky, but here we go. I'll post it to the uh cool, cool. Oh, ah, sorry, I got my head in another machine. Sounds like literally. Uh actually yes, literally. I should have buy myself back some table space by finishing the machine that is currently unfinished on the table. Oh, that's cool. What is that? So that'll justify against two edges of the bed, and then it'll hold the uh, 270 um, and a uh, 16 LED NeoPixel ring. Oh, nice. I don't have any way to hold the NeoPixel ring down right now and built into here, but I was thinking... I might just cheap out and use a drop of hot glue or something. Yeah. Glue is definitely a thing people use in industry. And products. You open up a, a toy. Usually things are glued. Uh, like glue. I'm sorry, what'd you say, Dan? Drop of hot glue full of squares of double-sided foam tape. Oh, that too. But yeah, this so my intention is just to use like a um a little clamp. I have a bunch of them. Like a little four inch uh clamp you can get anywhere, like uh, the DeWalt or whatever. Um and then um so you just push this up against the two edges of the bed, throw on your clamp to hold it put. Um and there you go. Connect the wire up to your 
um, for the NeoPixel and for the uh, USB, and um, you can run your calibration. Oh, uh, Daniel, what was your verdict on the location of the camera? I have been loosely following in chat, but I've also been super busy today. But it seems like you had come to some conclusion about whether or not it was worth putting it, or whether or not you could save space by putting it in different places or not. No, I'm. I we were just looking at the little camera mount. Okay. Uh, do you holes in the front of the bed plate help? I've been back and forth, but I'm I'm messing with the NeoPixel lighting for the camera. Okay. Do you want to know what my values were, or are you just happy to do it yourself? Oh, I've got it. Uh, I am. I'm moving the light around and. At the moment, I just have one little strip of four. I don't have a ring. And I may solder on another little strip of four so I can run it down both sides of the camera. Or I may not. I don't know. I promised myself I wouldn't stay up too late tonight, and here it is midnight in Texas. Um, so, so I've been going back and forth with the uh, asking 713 Maker if they're willing to do a new rev of the bed. Uh, being met with some resistance, but uh, working through that, that's okay. Um, I guess my question was, you're still okay with a whole pattern, and I'm happy to share the CAD file beforehand, but a whole pattern is still useful in front of the bed, or no? style hot end where the two wires come down to the heater and they've got that uh, proof insulation on them. It really loves to find the end of that insula insulation as a circle. <laughs> huh. Oh, did you hear Mike? Did you end up hearing me? I uh, we'll question? find that all day when it won't find the end of the nozzle. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go tape that up. I'll be right back. I, I didn't hear your question, Josh. I oh. heard him. That's weird. Um, what he was trying to ask Daniel is what he thought of the usefulness of having the, the mounting holes on the front of the, the bed. So, uh, he said we talked earlier about that. Okay. Okay. That's really just a lot of sense. Oh, as in like it's not worth it or there's not enough space or? I mean, if you've got Hameras on there, you're not going to mount any because they're deeper. I see. Um, and they that that cause you. I mean, if you give up a tool, right? Uh -huh. You can do it, but okay. otherwise, no. Okay. Okay. So um, take a look at uh, take a look at the nozzle alignment. Some of the stuff that I posted this evening. Okay, I'll look there. Out, there's a swing out mount for for cleaning a nozzle, but it could be easily mounted. A camera could easily be mounted. Okay, and I'll I'll take a look there then because I think I'm kind of under like slight pressure from 713 to give him a new bed design sooner rather than later. And I was like, oh crap, I still haven't put the the yeah, whole pattern in. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I was talking with. Uh, okay. With who? Uh, Mandela Roseworks. Oh yeah. Uh, Wayne, right? Wait. Yeah. Wait. 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 So I was chatting with him last night about. Uh, next gen bed. Yeah. Um, he's like, yeah. As soon as Josh gets me the drawing, but he was gonna he was gonna adjust it to put the magnet mount on the top. Which is okay. That's just like his style, and they both work. They all work. Yeah, they all work. Um, something I noticed when I was cleaning my my CBC and C bed. Okay. Uh, last night is I can actually see on the surface where the machine uh, 
where the pockets were machined. Oh, interesting. So they like recess? On the bottom. From like the other side of the bag. Slight. Yeah. There's a there's a slight fold for each of the for each of the pockets. Interesting. I mean, it's I can barely I I can't quite feel it, but I can certainly see it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it could also be that it's negligible for stuff that isn't that uh it could be that it's just negligible. Yeah, I mean, a slight divot. I mean, you've got the whole plate on top of that, the magnet plate. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. Just, this is a small region. I just thought it was surprising when I, when I peeled the plastic. Honestly, wow, it kind of makes sense easy. because you're not taking, you're not removing material from both sides. Um, so maybe it's because of. Well, you know, my six should be a little should be better at that, not having uh, a continual stress. If you're shallow or cut, you're not going to. Well, yeah. it, it depends it on. Stress. So the internal stresses, Josh, would depend on if they if they milled it fast and it got hot. Hmm. Right. And aluminum is one of those things you have to be really careful with. Otherwise, you gum up your uh, you gum up your bit or your tool. Yeah, it just turns into goo instead of cutting. All right. You got to have enough of a feed to break, make chips, but too hard of too much of a feed. Like, although aluminum's pretty good at dissipating that. It's not like you're machining titanium. Oh. Woo, buddy, or stainless. Inconel is more fun. Stuff that catches on fire. Inconel and Caymanel. We'll work on that. Oh, and we've got to make it sub safe while you're doing it. Sub safe. How about that? Yeah, no, it, it's like you make your root pass and then you x ray it. Yeah. And then you make like three filler passes and then you stop and x ray. Yeah, my, my cousin went into the welding industry into welding for nuclear power plants yep. and uh it's ridiculous you basically get two failed welds in your career and then you're done oh my that's, well you that's get funky. Them, but you can check them as often as you want but if you let something go oh yeah no i'm talking and you're done our, 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 the welders had to requalify every six they had to go do a check run yeah and get it uh, tested. He's he's my cousin who can you know weld a pop can. AC start man, AC start, high frequency. Yeah. So um, I'm actually printing one of these mechanisms because I want to put my hands on it. Printing a what mechanism? So if you look, if you pop over to nozzle alignment. Ah, yes. Let right. me take a look. I have been uh, super busy today uh, trying to catch up on stuff, and it was also my birthday. It had to, I. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We're going to have a party. Hey, look, there's a party. <laughs> oh, thanks. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Oh, is it automatic tool brush? It is a automatic tool brush, but I was considering mounting a camera on. Oh, I like that. Okay. Oh, oh, well, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it also has some Z movement. So as it once it swings out, you can continue racking. Um, you can continue racking it and. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm really glad I made a box to grab all these shards or purges. Worked up my my uh, my Z offset on the big printer. 
now I've had to rework it into rework my way back into it. So once I get it running again, I can start playing that. <laughs> so yeah. happy birthday, so what did you do for yourself today? Oh, thanks. Um, no, honestly, mostly work. Uh, did get a nice phone call from my parents and from uh, a few friends, which was cool. Um, yeah, uh, I have been quite busy catching up on stuff and trying to make sure trying to make sure I'm not uh, delaying anyone at this point. So I think like corner plates are out. I'm happy about that. So they're I think they'll be back, and I think people will be able to buy them. I think next week. Uh, because Wade's awesome and super fast. Also, yeah, we wanted to tell Wade that put us down. I mean, we did the whole fries, take my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that should be exciting. Um, so that's, that was, uh, I got to get instructions. So the instructions are now up to date. I just had to make sure that everything on the, like, what to buy list, which should be, like, the default for 2.03, is correct. It's, like, the only thing that changed... Uh, you're going to need 16 millimeters holes of bolts, which is... Oh, uh, no, actually, they will carry them um, in, um, okay, like a little bit less than a month. But, um, so yeah, trying to close loops on that end, too. So they, I, I asked... What are the and, changes in the shoulder bolts for? They're taller because there's a three millimeter spacer. He said the word... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, it's becoming a thing. Yeah, so that happened. Oh. So why did we buy 20 millimeter shoulder bolts? Oh, because we thought we were going to need them, and we were... Wait, did I tell people to do that? Oh, crap. Did something yep. happen? When, yeah. No, no, no. You're going to need 25. And 16. Er or was it twenty? Oh, twenty-fives. Okay, okay. You still need twenty-fives. Twenty-five, 25 yeah. That's okay. They just go in the toolbox with all the rest of the stuff. Uh, oh, I can come up with a project that needs that again. How thick is uh, the acrylic again, there, Steve? Do you remember? Uh, it should be three mil, I think. But it's. Hold on, let me check. I've got it right. I'm just trying to. Pick out the right screws. I need. It looks like three mil. Okay. Oh, that was yeah. Useful. It's like three point two something. Yeah, I just got the fucking screws. Ah, the worst. And they're not magnetic. Could be worse. I somehow, somewhere, I have no idea how, but a resistor got in the carpet. Ooh. And then the resistor got in my foot. That was the kind of what I was bracing myself for. I was like, those are not like Legos, where you step on them and they, you're like, oops, okay. Oh, no, oh. no. It's, not as, I mean, it's just a resistor. It's not as bad as stepping on a 555. Ooh. <laughs> I had a friend one time. Oh. I had a friend throw a motherboard at me, and I caught it. Palm to palm. Oh, that does not sound good. Right. Yeah, it was nice fun. I think I actually have a functioning a functioning Z offset at this point. Hey. Oh, yay, which means I can I can start a printer. The dumbest yay. electronics uh injury I've ever had was from a friend of mine when I was like ten or twelve. And I was soldering in the basement, and he thought it was funny to turn the soldering iron around. Wait, what? He, he thought it was funny to turn the hot soldering iron around. So the and he was out. Friend, right? Right. Because, haha, funny. It's hot. Uh, yeah. he, he wait, as in, like, was... like, turn it around inside the stand? Uh, laying on my table. So I reached oh, over to grab it. Grabbed it. Oh. Um, <sighs> show a friend, right? Sorry. Or not? Yeah. I thought you were cousins. I didn't mean I heard that wrong. No, this you was might. this was my friend who lived across the street from me. 
Uh, we were each other's best friends and enemies simultaneously for most of our childhood. Uh, I uh, had a similar experience, but I did oh, it to no. myself. I was... Oh, uh, your own worst enemy? I was uh, soldering something, and I'd been doing this for hours. Like, for some reason, the number six hours, I don't remember what it was, but... Like, I would have been doing it for hours and hours and, you know, tired, not thinking. And uh, I have a habit of taking the pencil and, like, grabbing it in both hands, you know, like, stick end or the eraser end in one hand, point it in in the other. Yeah, I did that with the soldering iron. Oh, oh. So that was fun. Yeah, I burned three fingers, and it, like, um, it looked kind of like bacon. (laughs) (sighs) I have lost my calipers. So, Josh, I'm trying to find a outlet receptacle that matches the size measurements of the original one roughly. Because I don't oh. have to cut my, 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 my precious acrylic panels all over again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. That, um... And there's, there's such a wide variety of widths and heights. Yeah, right. Not <laughs> you would assume that there would be like, oh, it's a standard... No, no. Yes, I did assume, in fact, for like a few months ago, that like there was a finite number of sizes, and that the finite number is like less than five. Yeah, no, there's like a hundred in the like I'm on DigiKey going through it, and there's, you know, just and of course DigiKey makes this absolutely horrible to try to figure out because sometimes they list it with the largest dimension first, and then sometimes it's the largest dimension second. Oh, that sounds bad. So, he also you know, calls them the, the descriptions of stuff on DigiKey. In this case, it ends up being really hard to filter. I don't know. I'm normally pretty good at filtering stuff on DigiKey, but yeah. I don't know what it yeah. was about power in the sockets that made them very difficult. Well, and it, it gets into the, like, there's the standards. So there's IEC and there's UL. Those those are different from one another, um, even though for the most part they're the same. Um <laughs> they have to list current for IEC and current for UL. You know, filtered, unfiltered. Does Josh still oh. have a an Amazon wish list? <laughs> oh, I have the original Amazon one. All right, guys. I am printing the camera mount if it works out. Well, it's in my uh, my wiki or my my GitHub if you wanted to look at it for some reason. Um, cool, I'll cool. Oh, that's the... the other big thing up for debate, uh, which is uh, like ninety percent convinced that we should move to normal wiki, not GitHub wiki. Um, the porting effort yeah. will be slightly painful, but I think the result will be worth it. I mean, like, because Daniel, you were adding pictures by linking to like your own GitHub page, right? Yeah, and that's you can that, do. That, that's the only like way it, to do it. It works, but it doesn't scale. Um, yeah. And if you ever remove that, or if, if you are like inactive on GitHub three years or something, and they decide that they're going to kill your project, then everybody, I don't know, like not that you would do such a thing. Well, it, but, I mean, things happen. Yeah, yeah or, or like someone else who is editing the wiki might do it once, add a picture that way, and then close their GitHub account, not yeah. knowing what the implications are. So or, as long well, as... I did. I did discover a very interesting trick today that I just stumbled across, and I've tried it once. This is an oddity. You can open, you can start to open an issue in the repository. You can just paste an image directly into the text field. You don't upload it or anything. You just oh, if I drag and drop, control it. Yeah. Yes. And, And then you get a URL that you can then put in the wiki, and you never even save the issue. What? That's yeah. that's super bonkers. 
Right. Um, yeah, you never yeah. even save the issue, much like, less commit like it. Or where, else. where is that URL? That, it's that, somewhere in Hub's universe. Wow. That is. That is such a hack. We should just make a, a an uploader web page yeah, that exactly. does that for you. <laughs> exactly. So, well, hey, that's a great find, though. I mean, but yeah. again, none of this scales. Yeah. Uh, and like, I feel like as soon as we have metal corner plates and Delrin wedge plates, it's a solid machine. It's not a hack anymore. People should be adding tool pages, adding awesome modifications, and being able to grow that in a place that is like sustainable. Yeah. So oh. <sighs> I I completely agree. We ought to get on wiki. What are the options of landing spots? Well, media wiki. We can get our own your domain. So that's yeah. much as I'd love to stay up and chat, I really gotta go to bed though. So have a good night. Oh, we'll let you know What's that? tomorrow how it goes. Oh, the wiki conversation? Yeah. Alrighty. Sounds good. I, I, I kinda I was wondering if if like Yeah, never mind. Um